So I know we don't normally do back-to-back -back School of the Spirit, but I wanted to because I've got some things that I really wanted to impart to you. And, you know, I've got, you know, just really f the way my schedule is going right now, I've got this week and then I've got next week. And then it's just things are really just getting really very, very busy for me because I'll be in Africa. We've got, we've got a lot of things going on also at the Mission Training Center. So I'm going to be able to, you know, get, get to the end points, as it were, that the Lord wants to bring us to as a ministry. And the good news is I know that a lot of people got different things going on tonight. There's shower, you know, baby showers, wedding showers, all these other kinds of things going on, and that's fine. And that's why we're so blessed for the YouTube and and that everyone can be able to have an opportunity to go back and just listen to these things and and profit from them and i'm going to open up tonight just simply saying that walking in the giftings of the spirit walking in the anointing is as natural as breathing and we're going to have to make it as natural as breathing for you it's the nature of the thing and you know people say well, how is it that you are able to step over into that manifest presence of the Lord and live and walk in that manifest presence of the Lord. Know that you're being led and guided by the Holy Ghost. First and foremost, it's His promise. And I'm, I'm hooked up with this promise. Simply, I asked and I had. I asked God for salvation and I received a great miracle. And then the Lord wants us to be able to understand those, things, those kinds of things that we're to ask Him for and then how that what we're asking for is, is a, appropriated in our lives. And it's not for us to deal with all the things that would run interference. Doubt and unbelief will run interference. You know, strongholds of Satan, demonic power, it would run interference to where that the, the manifestation of the gifts of God and the power of God uh, sometimes is resisted. And so what, if, those, if those things of doubt, if unbelief, if demonic resistance wasn't there, we would, you would easily see the result that God has promised. And when those things are there, they run an interference and they can't be to us something that is a witness or a testimony that says, oh, well, we must not be anointed enough because we've got a better testimony already. And so I really want to, and that, of course, is God's word. So really want to grab your attention about how natural, how easy it is to function and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And if it's anything less than that, if you've got a force, it won't work. It's not God. Okay, Father's promised he'll do it. All we've got to do is believe, move with them. And it's just really, truly that simple. Now, what we love is we love the inspiration, and the inspiration will come. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. But if I could just get you to a place where you're willing to recognize that this stuff is by nature. This is natural. This comes to us by, it's just a natural, it's just an overflow of the relationship. Let me tell you something about the relationship. The relationship really does come down to the, and the bare reality of we're giving God permission to bless, with, bless us. It's like we're giving God permission to interact with us. So, and it doesn't take a lot. Use Daniel as a model. Daniel just talked to the Lord three times a day and look what Father did with him through it, okay? <laughs> you know, and it, it, and it really isn't these long, lengthy periods of time. I enjoy a longer period of time spending in the presence of the Lord, but five minutes, 10 minutes, having five or 10 minutes that really go somewhere in God has a huge impact on how it builds you up. You know, Daniel just got down and just worshiped the Lord, gave thanks three times a day. And I want to tell you something about giving thanks. People get out of a place of where they're connected to God, with God, the Holy Spirit, simply because they become unthankful, and that's it. And they allow the bombardments of this life. There's too much to be thankful for. You could just go, Father, I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm breathing. Thank you for the sky above, the ground beneath. I mean, just start giving thank, give everything that you see that you like. Just start being thankful for it. And then it said, thank you that none of my, my you know, none of my family died in a car accident. You extend your protection. No fire came down out of heaven, you know, orchestrated by the devil and burned up my stuff. And I mean, we could just go on and on and on and on. There's no end to being thankful. And then you start thanking him, Lord. How many times a day are you allowed to thank the Lord for your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? How many times a day are you allowed to thank the Lord that you aren't already burning in hell, that he kept you to the day that you gave your life to him? I mean, come on. How many times are you allowed to do that? And how many times is that? When is that going to get boring? I guarantee you it ain't going to get boring. It's going to get more exciting. It's going to get more real. Primary, if I say, somebody said, well, how do I connect? How do I hook up? Get happy. Get thankful, really, more than anything else. Maybe you're not really happy. Maybe you're not really rejoicing. But you begin to be thankful. You begin to just count. 
you, you know, the, the things that God has done for you, and you just worship him through that, and your life is going to dramatically change. Huh? I have never had a hook. I've never really hooked up with God telling him about how terrible I am and, <laughs> you know, and, and all, all the rest of the stuff. Never. It just said you just work yourself into a frenzy. You might as well just get some broken glass out. Go ahead and cut yourself while you're at it. Make a full work of it, okay? Slice yourself up, you know, beat yourself with something. And, uh, because it ain't going to get any better. But when you begin to give thanks, because thanks and praise are really connected. And that's what we're created to do. And that's where you're going to find the Holy Spirit. He's gonna be, you're going to find him right there in that midst of, of praise. But, you know, we just say, Holy Spirit, here I am. I want you to lead me. I want to be able to recognize you today. I want you to know that I want to be led. I want to be guided by you. I want to follow Jesus. I want to do the ministry of Jesus. Whatever it takes, here I am. Work through me. That's what I got to do. How hard is that? How long did it take me to do that? 30 seconds. And then it can go deeper than that, but fine. Fine. That, that, that's it. I mean, if, uh, because I know that there's a lot of God's people that live in such oppression and such doubt and such unbelief and so, bu so much busyness. They don't even do that. They don't even do that. It needs to become a way of life. It becomes a habit of your life. And, and, and then all of a sudden, you have set your heart. You've declared to the Lord. It's not a bunch of, you know, struggle and, oh, my goodness, how am I going to be a follower of Jesus, do the works of Jesus? Oh, I need to go fast for 100 days. And it becomes all of this doubt and unbelief and struggle rather than just a simple participation with an idea that God had. Okay? It's, what, it, it's to simply participate with his plan. We act like we're trying to talk God into doing something. We, that's complicated. That's wrong. That's doubt. That's unbelief. It's not the word of God. It's going to keep you from the stuff. It's going to keep you from the good things in God. And so you're going to have to just make it simple. Now, in knowing that we're doing these things by nature, and I'm, I'm just let you look at a couple of verses of Scripture. Look at in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. Okay? And, and let me get my Bible with you here, and, and I just, I, I'm going to just grab a couple of things here real quickly. You know, we've been born of the Spirit. We've been born of the Holy Ghost. God is in us. God is with us. Huh? He's, he's alongside of us. He's our companion. We might, hey, listen, we, you might not believe it, but God believes it. Okay, because he said so. You know, you might have a struggle with it, but God loves you more than you can possibly ever imagine. He's protects you. You'd be dead today if God would protect you. You'd already be burning in hell if it weren't for God's love. Satan had taken you out when he could, when he had, when he had a chance. He'd taken you out just as soon as he could. That's the way it is. He'd have taken you out the day before, as it were, when you were thinking about giving your life over to Jesus. So you've got a lot to be thankful for. God's on your side, and if he wasn't, you'd be out of here. You know, so you might as well just get over your whatever it is that's stopping you from being thankful and recognizing how much Papa loves you. And, you know, you've entered into the realms of the kingdom of God. People don't realize that. If you're born of the Spirit, you can understand the realms of the kingdom of God. When you're born of the Spirit, you can see and understand the realms of the kingdom of God. We've been delivered. Say delivered. That's the same as being saved. Praise God. That's the same word. I've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness. I've been translated over into the kingdom of the dear son. That's the kingdom of God. I'm there. I don't have to struggle with it. If I'm struggling, I'm still in doubt. And I believe God ain't going to work in doubt. You just have to get over yourself. And you're going to have to, and, and somebody said, how am I going to get over myself? I want to do that. Please pr tell me how to get over myself. Start being thankful. That'll help you get over yourself. Start dealing with all these wild, negative, you know, brow-beaten, condemning, you know, I'm lower than a worm's belly attitudes. And start being who God's calls you to be. It's just really simple. If you can make this natural instead of complicated, if it becomes by nature, I say, the Lord says, the Lord, the, here's the Lord's plan. I want you to follow me. And I want you to imitate me and do what I do. And then you can't just like act all devastated like this. It's impossible. What am I going to ever do? How can I ever do it? You just do it. You just it be. You just exist in it. That's believing. I exist in it. I mean, you know, you said to the Lord, you called upon the name of the Lord. The Lord saved me. He saved you. You were born of the Spirit. Everything else works the same way. And I'm going to get in a little bit deeper here in just a minute and talk to you about some of the th things that look like complications. And they look like, uh, evidence that we don't have what God says is ours and that somehow we're, you know, least preferred children. But they're all, they're all explainable. They're all lies. They're all hindrances. There's things to be cast down and not to be agreed with, okay? So Romans chapter 8 
and right here in verse 3, the scripture says to us, For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So everything that the, the, that the law described wasn't able to impart it, so therefore it was weak. So Father made a way to where that all the things that he willed for our life could be imparted, and so that the, so that the righteousness of the law <laughs> might be fulfilled in us. So it's fulfilled in us, okay? We're, we're walking act, not after our own human ability, not after, a, not after a place where we're, you know, bound by the powers of darkness under the authority of Satan, but we're walking by the Holy Ghost. We're living in Him. He's living in us. Is that pretty powerful or what? How often? All day long. When you're aware of it and when you're not aware of it, He's right there. All you got to do is acknowledge Him, and as soon as you do, you begin to hook up with Him. Father demands a relationship. He wants a relationship. A relationship is going to acknowledge that Father's there. A relationship is going to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit is here. And when we do, we'll then begin to come under the strong impulses of those things which He's gifted us with. You don't realize it, but He's gifted you with all the manifestations of the Spirit. He's made available to you as gifts of the Spirit. He's made available to you all of those things that belong to the ministry of Jesus so that you can follow Jesus. I, mean, I think some people's interpretation of following Jesus is that they're going to walk around in a white gown with sandals and just walk around. I don't know what people, what, what people are thinking because you talk about function flowing all the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, we can't all have all the gifts of the Spirit. Then you can't follow Jesus because when we're following Jesus, we're imitating Jesus. We're doing what he did. This isn't complicated. He showed us what this is. And then people want to twist it with their imaginations. They want to make it complicated. They, you know, people want to make it something uh, that rests within the framework of their own human ability and effort as though they can do it with their own strength or they can find a way to make it happen. You can't. When you hear God say something, you say, oh, I want that. And that's about all you got to do. He says, here, you can have that. And he said, nah, you can't have it. I, Lord, I want you to save me. Okay, fine, you're saved. Here's a new heart, new spirit. And everything else is about that hard. Just a little bit easier. It gets easier, actually. Have you begun in the Spirit to now be made perfect by the flesh? No. You've begun in the Spirit now to be made perfect by the Holy Ghost. To be made complete in every way. And all these things that Father has said, they're empowering words. He says, you can do this. And you might be standing on the edge of the pool saying, I can't, I can't jump in, I can't swim. He said, no, you can do it. You're safe. What is that? You know, you can do it. Just do it. And, and at some point in, in our relationship with him, you know, we become confident that he loves us, that we can really do this, that he really said we could do this. I love reading about the Canaanite woman, the woman from Syrophoenicia, because she's just such a model. She's like, you know, the Lord's, the, the disciples are, the Lord won't talk to her. She's screaming, yelling. The Lord won't even answer, ignores her. The disciples are saying, you woman, get out of here. Jesus, tell her to leave. You know, he's saying, listen, you know, it's, you know, I've come for the lost sheep of Israel, not for you guys. And she just keeps going, keeps on, and she falls down and worships, says, please, Lord, help me. And he says, it's not right for me to give you the dog, give the children, give the, to the dogs. She actually, he actually said little dogs. He it's not right for me to give the little dogs the children's bread. She said, true, Lord, but the little dogs eat the crumbs, fall from the master's table. Oh, great is your faith. That's what he said. He said it was an exclamation mark. Sometimes it's used in scriptures that it's not actually existing. But in this one particular scripture, it's used. It's exclamation mark. Oh, oh, woman, great is your faith. Whatever you want is yours. And from that moment, her child has ever been whole. See, God's just waiting for us to respond to him the same way. It's mine. It, these, we, we know she's ta it's almost like she's talking him into it by telling him, that she, he can't talk her out of it. And we turn it around. We're saying, we're like, you know, the Lord's having to talk us into it. You know, and that's got to just stop. And so, you know, when we, you know, we give the devil way too much credit. The only thing to do to the devil is smash him. That's it. Tell him to get his stuff and get pronto. I don't have the right to, to destroy him and in the sense of annihilate him, send him into the lake of fire right now, but I can tell him to get out of my realm, okay? That's it, and we're done. We're done with him. No more than even, but because look, you, if you look here in Ephesians now, or just real quickly, turn over there with me to Ephesians chapter 2. 
you'll see that, you know, we can't give any place to the devil. We can't give him power. We can't give him rights. But we can see that in verse 3 that our con we once had, past tense, our conversation in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind. And we were, we once were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We're not that anymore. We've been delivered from wrath. Okay, so then you go over to Second Peter real quickly, and then you can see what we are. We, we can see that, you know, in, in verse 3, that he's given us everything that pertains uh, unto life and godliness by his divine power. So I have a divine power, his divine power working in my life that's given to me everything that I need because verse 4, verse 4, he has given and he's made me a partaker of his divine nature. So I have his divine nature. I no longer under the influence of the nature that is separated from and foreign to him. I've given his divine nature when I was born by the spirit. I'm walking in the spirit now and as a result, I'm fulfilling everything that God wanted us wanted me to be when he shaped Adam from the fine dust of the earth. So when we say we fulfill, we fulfill the law by the Spirit, okay, we understand it's far more than just the concept of the Mosaic law. We're talking about having dealt with the law of sin and death and everything that was, uh, uh, everything that was a part of it to now live out in full the life that God purposed us when he made us in his own image and his own likeness to be, to, to be in an in, in, in airship with him to do what it is he's doing. That's the, that was the plan when God created Adam. Adam fell, and so in that fall, Father was willing to make a way to where that you and I could be, have our life and have our existence in Christ Jesus. Here's our whole, the dynamics of our problem. Listen to me. This is the dynamics of our problem. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you the dynamics of the problem. Don't, don't get distracted. Stay right where you're at. You'll be fine. The dynamics of the problem is this. We have a troubles believing that our existence is in Christ Jesus. Why? We look at our frailties, our weaknesses, our shortcomings. We look at our inabilities. And Satan basically puts a, puts a, you know, flashing lights and horns and buzzers and whistles around it saying, look over here. And fail to realize that what God has said is something that is already established. And so we're in this struggle with who we are fundamentally in relationship to God, the Holy Ghost. And we're trying, whether we realize it or not, to be good enough. And Father's already made us good enough. It's already complete. It's already done deal. It's already finished. And until you step over into the complete and the done deal and the finish, you're in the struggle. And so what I've got, what you've got to begin to understand is that you do this naturally. You just, you naturally walk around having an uninhibited relationship with the Lord. Somebody said, I'm, I'm struggling to have right standing. It's yours. It's yours. You have right standing with the Lord. And there's no struggle with it. It's a gift. Now, what you're going to have to do is what the big principal thing in terms of being in the school of the Spirit is that you're going to have to recognize what's contrary to the Word of God, and then you're going to have to find a way to deal with it. Now, some people can grow, have grown and matured enough to where that as soon as something that comes into their mind or their thinking is contrary to the Word of God, they can immediately push it aside and send it away. Other people, it's like a stronghold. It's just constantly on their mind. It's just plaguing them. They can't get rid of the thought. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to just tell you what to begin to do, okay? What you begin to do is you say, you begin to talk to the Lord. Lord, help me to deal with these thoughts. Father, I only want to live by your word. Begin to speak it out of your mouth. Begin to tell the Lord what you want to do. Don't say, oh God, I'm such a miserable failure. I don't even see how you're putting up with me. I'm lower than worms, belly can't even, you know, whatever. All of the doubt and unbelief. Don't tell him a bunch of garbage out of your mouth. Begin to declare the word of God. To, say, Father, I don't want these things harassing me and tormenting me. I want your word to dominate over me. Lord, I recognize that this is not of you and I'm asking you to come strengthen me now. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to take long. With you doing that, and just sitting around, instead of just sitting around and passively just letting it all come, 
I think that culturally, we've been trained to just passively sit there and let it all come. Because we sit and watch television and, you know, we get entertained right, left, and center. And our brain has gotten adjusted to just being in neutral. You know, just, I don't know what that is. We've kind of got adjusted to be lazy, being lazy with respect to our thinking. You know, I, there is a, you know, I don't want to get into this tonight, but there is a matrix of our life that we need to understand how that uh, the sevenfold anointing of the Lord Jesus ought to hit every, the sevenfold anointing of who we are, or seven point, sevenfold dimension of who we are. You know, there's a seven, there's sevenfold dimension to who we are. Wisdom has hewed out her house. She's established it on her seven pillars. You know, there's the heart, there's the mind, the soul, there's the, the there's the will there's the, uh, the, the thought realm um, and, and, you know, every dimension of who we are, spirit, soul, will, mind, heart, thought, that whole being of who we are should be being affected by the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, spirit of understanding, spirit of power, spirit of the fear of the Lord. You, and you see the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Ghost ought to be affecting every part of our life. But there's all of these things going on that are running interference. And you got to be careful about all the pollution. We, we, there's a bunch of people that have been, that are raised up in a culture to where that they literally, I mean, this is amazing to me, but they pay like, you know, they, they have binges of just playing these video games that go on and on and on and on 24 hours up all night playing a video game. And that there's a huge population of people around the world that do this. And, and, you know, it's just, and, 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 and it goes with movies, it goes with other things to where that it just engages the imagination that is contrary to the will and the working of God and it solidifies a place in which now God can't even get in. It actually solidifies a realm in which Satan can operate. Every, things opposed to God can function in your life. You have to be careful. You have to be, you have to, you, know, you want to walk in the spirit. Come on, man. Get over in the realms of heaven. And, 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 so when all that stuff's crammed on the inside of you, it's very difficult to just naturally do this. But the Lord Jesus came set us free. I'm free. I'm free of all that. I'm free of harassing, tormenting thoughts. Praise God. It doesn't mean I'm not tempted by them. It doesn't mean it doesn't come at me. It is that when the stuff comes at me, I throw it off. Because I'm going to live by the word. I've come under the rule of God. I've given myself to the word of God. And I've learned how to praise. I've learned how to continually worship him. I've learned how to yield myself over to him. I mean, my goodness, people, if you go all day and you don't give, you don't give a verbal recognition to the Holy Spirit or to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be pretty weak at the end of the day. You're going to be pretty knuckleheaded at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Knuckleheaded and hard-headed and hard-hearted. And now, you know, you're going to make wrong choices. Because your mind and your thinking and your thoughts are so far from, you never one, day, one single moment in the day said, Holy Spirit, take control. Oh, that's default? No, it ain't default. If it wasn't a relationship, then it would be a default. See, the Lord made a monkey to just be a monkey all day long. He's programmed to be a monkey. Ooh, that's all he does is just a monkey. A cow, just a cow all day long. That's all it does. But you and I, he made us with lots of choices and purpose. And, 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 and within that framework, he leaves us to choose. He said, my word has set you free. I don't care what the problem is. You should know the truth and the truth will set you free. The word of truth, the spirit of truth. That's what I want. I want to live in freedom. You want to live in freedom? Freedom is the right and the privilege now to, fool, to, to choose, to get to choose. God has given me and you the power and the privilege to choose. And I choose to walk with him and to serve him. And I've been delivered from the power of darkness. Now he says, you know, he tells us, he says, I'm, uh, keep, you're kept by the power of God through faith and salvation. Praise God for that. And then he tells us to keep ourselves and praise God for that. So now we have freedom to keep ourselves, to say, no, I'm not having anything in my life but that which belongs to the kingdom of God and that which belongs to heaven. And because that God has given us that power, Satan has no right. He's got to back off. That's about all you got to do. I'm, I'm serving God. That's about all you got to do. You don't understand? I bind you, Satan, in Jesus' name. I take the blood of Jesus and I paint myself and everything around me. I take the oil of grace and all the rest of this stuff. It's basically an act of unbelief. Because I'm already in the realm, man. 
I'm already over there. I'm not in Passover night. Praise God, it's, it's Pesach. It's Passover right now, according to the Jewish calendar. Jesus is not Passover. I'm not having no Passover feast. I'm having it every day. Does that mean to say I, don't, I have a problem sitting down eating some lamb tonight? I'm having some communion with Jesus tonight. Huh? It doesn't, I mean, I don't need no bitter herbs necessarily, you know, and remember what bitterness I come out of. I'm in the joy. Okay? Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I've, I'm going to celebrate something. I'm going to celebrate another crossing over. Crossing over from the darkness into the light. Hallelujah. That's Passover to me. I'm going to celebrate Passover in an entirely different dimension. So, I might need, so one day I'm going to have a, I'm a New Testament Passover feast. And it's going to be entirely different. It's going to be new covenant stuff, not just sitting around talking about going through the Red Sea. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, back called us to going out of the realms of darkness. Hallelujah. Into the realms. Hallelujah. Of the heavenly. Now, when we, when we get this settled in our spirit, now it's just, it's, we got it. <laughs> I got the life of Jesus Christ. I come up against, now, whatever I need. Do I need a word of wisdom? I got it. I just, somebody asked me a question. They're asking for the things of the, about the things of the Spirit. Anybody, anywhere, anytime, you can wake me up in the middle of the night, shake me and say, hey, listen, Pastor, I need to know something. And immediately, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I might be, I might be oh, well, oh, well, wait just a minute. Oh, oh. But as soon as I wake up, you know, and you say, well, I say, what did you say? And you're inquiring of the Lord immediately. If you ask me about how my car runs, I'm going to, you know, say, you get out of here. You know, leave me alone. I'm going to go back to sleep. You ask me about whether or not you're going to get a return on your taxes. I'm going to say, leave me alone. But you ask to inquire of the Lord immediately. The anointing is going to be there, and I'm going to be able to function in the spirit of counsel. Spirit of counsel rules every part of my being. It rules my heart. rules my mind. rules my thoughts. Spirit of counsel. Spirit of the fear of the Lord rules me. Okay? I can rely on that. Somebody needs wisdom and insight. The Lord will give me wisdom and insight if they're inquiring of him. There are times that people come to me, they ask for counsel, they ask for wisdom. They don't want to hear what God says. I know immediately. You, have you ever, you know, just, you know, you, you started to pray a prayer and you, you, you felt like you were talking to yourself? Huh? You just, words were just going nowhere. They were just, ugh. They said, blah, blah, blah. You know, it just felt, felt that bad. It felt, it sounded awkward. It didn't make any sense. Are you with me? And somebody ain't listening. As soon as I wait for the inspiration, I wait for the flow. I've, 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 it's because it's so natural. As soon as somebody's speaking something in the truth, it hits me. As soon as there is an opportunity to really have a miracle, it hits me big. Get the faith, it hits me big. Compassion hits me big. I don't have to try to figure it out. Oh, there's somebody in a wheelchair over there. It's my obligation and my duty to go over here and get them out of that wheelchair. It, nothing's going to happen. A.A. Uh, a. A. Allen, it is said that A.A. A. Allen, because I know people who are around him, and um, it is said that he, what he did was he, would, he, had, he found a place in prayer and conversation with the Lord. And, you know, the Lord has different dynamics for every different person, but it's natural. It's going to be that what you do in the way that you've engaged. He would know who was going to get healed before he ever went out. So he'd already know what was going to happen. He would already know. There's a person going to be in the meeting to get a word of knowledge. There's a person going to be in the meeting tonight. They're paraplegic. They're going to be healed. There's going to be a person in the meeting tonight. They're blind. They're going to see. Here's who they are. This is what they look like. And so he would go out, and he was great at dramatizing the thing and saying, yeah, how many of you people believe that this person that's blind is going to be able to see? He already knew. He would just make it really big. Well, if God, it, 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 the God that I preached whose name is Christ Jesus, if, the, if he doesn't heal this woman tonight, you know that this gospel that I'm preaching is not true. He already knew what the results would be. People come along, try to do the same thing, and they ain't got nothing. They're just, just you know, come on. And you, now, you don't understand the dynamics because reality of it is, it probably would happen every time, even if people just did that and they didn't know what they were doing. They were just imitating what A.A. Allen did. It would probably, just in the name of Jesus, they would result in a miracle. However, you don't know about the unbelief. You don't know about the doubt. You don't know about the demon stronghold. You don't know about the mitigating circumstances. You don't know about all the choices that they have made. Look at Jesus. Could do very many works in Nazareth because of their unbelief. Can, then can you do many works in Nazareth? Well, the Lord has definitely called us to greater works than these, but you're going to have to find a, a, a place of a greater dimension of authority, okay? 
What I want everybody to do is I want everybody to quit waiting for another day. God wants you to quit waiting for another day. If I come up to somebody and I say, are you saved? And they say, God knows. I'm going to tell them, you're supposed to know too. If they say, I'm not sure, then I'm going to say, you aren't. You're not. Because faith hasn't hit your heart yet. An assurance in what God has given the testimony of his son. And the same way it needs to be about baptism and the Holy Ghost. How many of you know that tongues and expression of tongues is actually a miracle? It's a miracle. And you know there's an inspiration with it. You know how that is? You, every one of you know how that is. Sometimes, you know, it's like it comes so rich you can't shut it down. Hey, guess what you're learning? How to move and to get to faith. How to respond to the atmosphere of miracles and the gifts of healing. How to respond to counsel. And it just comes so natural. It's just a flow that you exercise and you give yourself to. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, you're, you're, just, uh, you're just a little bit about, you know, it's just barely coming out. You're like, duh, 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 duh. Uh -huh. it's just, you're stuck. And the best thing to do when you're stuck is just say, Holy Spirit, pray. Pray through me, and and it, and the kalabosa should be a activated. <laughs> Hallelujah, should be activated. If it's not, then you just begin to say, "Listen, Lord, I thank you that that you show me if there's anything that is standing in the way, any hindrances in the way, anything that I've given place to that has grieved you in any way, because I don't want to grieve you. I want you to be as happy with me." As you've always been, I don't want to do anything to offend you and hurt you. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that removes the offense. And by that time, you should be broken out into full Holy Ghost shout. Why? Because the Lord does it that quick. He does it that instantly. It's all a free gift. It's that which provision which he has made. He bore all of our sins away at Calvary. He's made all of this act, actually uh, available to us. We have access to it at any time, any moment, instantaneously. And if we don't believe it for ourselves, there's not going to be a whole lot of faith moving through our life to tell somebody on the street that the Lord will wash away their sins too because we're not sure he's washed away ours. It's hard to tell somebody God loves them when you're not sure that he loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Huh? Well, I just don't believe God loves me. Well, then deal with the doubt and unbelief. How do I deal with the doubt and unbelief? Read the Bible. <laughs> and ask the Lord. Just say, Lord, I, Lord, you can see I, I'm just so full of doubt and unbelief. I don't know. Maybe I'm related to Thomas. I don't know. <laughs> But what do I do? Do I struggle with it? Oh, God, I'm just just terrible, miserable. Lord, I want you to strengthen me right now by the Spirit so that I can live in the, in, 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 in the Holy Ghost realms of confidence and assurance and boldness. I'm not going to try to fix myself. I'm a God-made man, not a self-made man. You're a God-made man, not a self-made man. You don't earn nothing from the Lord. You receive it. You don't earn it. Huh? People walk around and act like that they're so much more anointed than everybody else, acting like you earn that. You didn't earn nothing. Father in his grace gave that to you. It belongs to Papa. Quit, like, quit acting like you got ownership here. Hello. Quit acting so arrogant. And, I'm, you know, I, Father's just giving me the kind of a nature and, and disposition that I kind of just go right out with it, you know. And um, hallelujah. Praise God. We just got different things we do. I just do it, by na I just do it naturally. It's just by nature. I, just, just, I am who I am in God naturally. Huh? And I, I, I just, I don't have any problem looking at preachers and say, quit showing off. We want to see Jesus. I want to see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't have a problem looking at a person and, and, you know, saying, look, quit, quit having that doubt and that unbelief in your life or get that sin out of your life. This just this flows. This is the Holy Ghost flowing through me right now. <laughs> and it's just natural. It's just natural. And, um, we want to live our way that way. Father, we're natural. We're, we're knowledge comes natural. I mean, I've had the Lord tell me tie my shoe. I didn't even know my shoe was untied. I've had him tell me other things. I didn't know it was, I was undone. Huh? Just, and then just, it, it, I mean, it was just that clear. It's a clear from heaven. You need to take care of that. And I'm like, well, I'd say in my mind, no, there's no problem there. It's done. You need to take care of that. And I go, fine. Oh, it wasn't done. Just natural. I'm talking to him. Guess what? He's talking to me. You talk to him. Guess what's going to happen? He didn't discover a dialogue. You're going to discover you don't like not having that time to spend with him, even though I believe in people getting trained to find five and ten minutes to pray. 
because you, you discover that you've been wasting and squandering five and ten minutes all over the place. Because sometimes it's a bit hard for people to find a place for an hour to go shut in with God. Let me tell you right now, you get to a place that you won't want to be without it. It's just too beautiful. There is a communion. There is a rest there. There is ability to hear him more plainly. And that works. It's relationship. You're, you know, there is a reward. In, there is a reward. Say reward. reward. Yeah. In seeking him. You always, he, Father is always rewarding. He says, let me use your boat. Okay, here you go. Yeah. I'm done using the boat. Now let's just go fishing. Well, there's no fish out there. Don't worry about it. Oh, there was fish now. There wasn't fish last night, but there's fish now. I'm going to get you a boatload of fish just because I won't bless you. All they did, the way they saw them, is just to stop for the period of time that he needed to minister. So I'm always saying, Lord, what do you want to do with me? Here I am. And, and, if, if, and, and if our life becomes his boat and he's able to speak to us and say, stop, talk to this person real quickly. Hey, how are you? Whatever the Lord gives you to say. Maybe somebody you know. Look, it's good, so good to see you. How are things going? You know, people ask you who you are. You know, that is a wonderful opportunity to talk about the things of God. To say, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm one of those data points that prove that God exists. That's a good one. Everybody's saying God doesn't exist. Who are you? Who are, what do you do? Well, I'm one of those data. I'm one of those proofs that God exists. Well, what do you mean? Well, let me tell you about it, man. My life was messed up. I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to transform my life. It's just amazing. So I just go around basically telling everybody about what, how good it is because, you know, it's like it's the, great, it's the best thing going. I'm, 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 I'm living now. I once was dead. I'm alive now. You know, it's like Phil saying, telling all the chiefs, you know, come, you're gonna, I'm going to tell you how once I was blind and now I see. You know, it, the Lord gives you the words of wisdom. It, it gives you words of knowledge. It gives you things to say to where it just captivates people's attention. And it's not hard. If you sit around and try to figure it out and calculate it and work it out, and you're going to just work yourself into a miserable rut. That's all you're going to do because you're not. But if you just walk around loving him and just begin to include the Lord into your life and the, to the dimension that he wants to be included, you begin to acknowledge the results that he has produced, that he lives in you, that he abides with you. Holy Spirit's in me and with me. Huh? But I've been acting terrible. I've been weak and frail and miserable. Well, he's still with you, man. It's amazing. He's an amazing God. Just go ahead and worship him because he's so good to you. Okay? Just go ahead and, you just go ahead and, just go ahead and have a Holy Ghost breakdown instead of getting in the rut of doubt and unbelief. Well, it can't be so. Well, it is, oh, so believe the good news. Huh? And then all of a sudden, there begins to be spiritual trans, transitions in your life where you're not walking around just oppressed by condemnation and guilt and all the negative imaginations because that's where that, that's where that power, as it were, solidifies in your life and works against the relationship that the Lord wants to have with you that is one of love. And it's not that we loved him, it's that he loved us. And you know what love is fully defined by? Giving. Huh? I heard one rabbi say, yeah, you love fish. Well, if you love the fish, you would have thrown the fish back. What you said was you love yourself because it tastes good. And so now you are going to sacrifice this fish's life for your own sake and purpose. I love fish. Well, there's too much of that going on in the dynamics of the way that we think. Uh, listen to me. Love is giving. And that's taught to us by Father, giving to us so much. Look at what he gave. And he continues to give. Does he ever run out of giving? Well, I'm not going to give to you anymore. No, he continues to give. And if you misbehave, you know what he's going to do? He's going to say, away with you. I don't want you around anymore. Sick of you. Sick! No, he's going to chasten you. Hallelujah. He's going to bend you over and spike your tail in, as it were. This is what he's going to do. So don't get all upset because he's chasing you. Then there's another opportunity to give thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> things ain't working out. You know the blessing of the Lord isn't on your life the way it should be. He's telling you, get out of your doubt and unbelief so I can bless you. Because I'm not going to bless your doubt and unbelief. I'm not going to reward your doubt and unbelief. Because then you're going to stay in doubt and unbelief thinking I like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
So it is say, okay, Lord, I know I'm not doing it right because I'm not getting your results. So speak to me th from your word and correct me from your word so that I can clearly understand. And then, it's gonna get, then what's going to happen? I'm going to get up on Sunday morning and I'm going to read the right act to you. And then you got the choice of whether you're going to say well, that that's of God or that's of men. And really it was right down the line of what you need to change if you're going to move forward with God. This is walking in the Spirit. This is living by the Spirit. You don't have to try to live by the Spirit. You've been born of the Spirit. We're in the Spirit. That's what we do by nature. Okay? We once were by nature the children of disobedience. Now we are by nature the children of God, having been given the divine nature, and now fulfill all the will of the Father for our life. Because He's leading us, guiding us, He's teaching us, He's going to show us how to do it. And I'm going to constantly be saying to the Lord, Father, I yield myself to you so I can step into a greater dimension of participating with you. Lord, I don't want doubt and unbelief in my life. I don't want to be hanging on to my own thinking, my own thoughts, my own way. I don't want to be distracted with all these things. Strengthen me, help me. So when we pray the prayer of faith, what then do we believe? It's done. Oh, God, increase the anointing. You don't need to pray that way. It should be exciting. Father, I ask you to increase the anointing now. Because we're getting, it's getting ready to happen. So like, I'm ready, okay? Father, I ask you to increase the anointing of my life right now. It shouldn't be, oh God, please. Ah, increase the anointing. Because how is that expecting that you're getting ready to get a download from heaven? That must be you're hoping for something to happen in the next 10 years. And you're feeling the pain of the weight. No, it's like Faith, how does faith touch it? I want it now. Give it to me now. My daughter is grievously tormented of a devil. She's grievously tormented being possessed of a devil. I'm not going to leave you alone until it's mine. And then we, in this relationship, we find that whatever we ask, Father's going to do it. We may not have the eyes to see how he's going to do it. We may not understand all the dynamics. No. I, I remember one night this guy in this... Baptist preacher in China, um, he came, brought all of his leadership and met me in, a, in Beijing and, you know, he, and he's telling me, well, you know, we heard about miracles that have been taking place and, you know, we, we're here to just, you know, honestly deal with this. We don't believe that miracles are for today. And I said, well, why don't you believe miracles are for today? He said, well, because I've prayed for people and they haven't got healed. I said, have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? He said, no. I said, you're not qualified. He said, well, then in the Old Testament, uh, they weren't baptized in the Holy Ghost, and they prayed for people that got healed. I said, you're not in the Old Testament. Because you're in the New Testament. To, get, to be able to see people get healed in the New Testament, you've got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so we got past that. It made sense. Okay. Hallelujah. And then, you know, he said, well, then why is it that, that when, you know, and he'd ask me, is there, I ever pray for people and then they get healed? And, you know, and I said, yeah, by, by the physical appearance of things at that moment, there's times where I see people that they don't get healed. Well, I could, well why didn't that happen? Well, you may, they may have taken communion in the wrong way. They may be right in the midst of bitterness and unforgiveness in their spirit. You don't know what's going on inside of them. They may be fighting God on such a way that Father's not going to, God, going to respond to them until they repent. You don't know what's going on because you're not looking at a blank slate here of somebody that's over there in Nepal or some unreached people group and never had an interaction with God. I mean, that's where the miracles happen real easy. You don't know where they violated. You don't know how many preachers they chewed up and, and digested and pooped out. I'm not kidding you. And I say this, I'm going to get real raw with you because people rip preachers apart all the time, take, violate things of the anointing. Huh? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's ignorant. Huh? It's just like the people eating uh, doves. I'm going to try to be more sanctified. Eating doves dung. In the Old Testament, eating doves dung, you know? That's the complete after effect of what the Holy Ghost and is speaking. That's what, that's the word of God already gone forth and digested and, and there's nothing left. And people feasting off of that. You, you know, you look, there's so many, and I, I don't want to go into all the dimensions of that. I get distracted. Really, 
you don't know the complications that you're dealing with in a person's in a dynamics in a person's life and especially if they've been a churchgoer and what's all been going on there and where the state of their heart is in the context of already having you know there's people walking around blaspheming the Holy Ghost they don't even know it as it were and they're not going to church and they don't know why they blaspheme the Holy Ghost and the Lord says you're not going to be convinced you're not going to be you're not going to be forgiven and the Lord I know gives the time and space to repent he does so and even in that verse of scripture you can't say that what God the Holy Ghost is doing is of the devil and never be forgiven but we know that he's putting a is a space of time you know where he didn't say they blaspheme the Holy Ghost and they are not forgiven he made a warning what you're doing is blaspheming the Holy Ghost and you're not going to be forgiven for that so a lot of things you know, Satan uses that against people all the time, especially people that have already been on negative. As soon as they hear negative, that's me. You know, you read, you read, you go read the symptoms of, er just get a book and start reading the symptoms of sickness. You've got every disease, every one of them. Okay, I've got the early signs of advanced liver cancer. <laughs> because the imagination is whack, stinking completely out. You don't even know how to relate to reality. The Lord will kill you, kill, kill you, kill, kill, he'll cure you of that. He'll cure, he'll cure, he'll cure you of that. You know, but the dynamics of doubt and unbelief on top of all of those other violations. We ought to be led by the Holy Ghost. We got to be willing to come under a place of divine inspiration and say, wait a minute, you know, I'm not going to move. I remember I remember watching, and it just so impressed me because I've got to, I've been able to watch it and view it all my life. I was with um, Oral Roberts, you know, about a year, year and a half before he died, and and a person had brought their son to Oral Roberts, and 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 the boy is a good boy, and the the man of God is a wonderfully anointed God, a man of God, and he and he took his son and he put him in front of Oral Roberts, and he said, "Oral, pray for my son," and and um, Bless my son, and and Orwell was just kind of ignore, ignoring it, and and Evelyn came over and said, "Lay your hands on him." He said, "Woman, don't tell me what to do. I can't do that without direction here. I mean, I'm happy to pray for anybody at any time, but what we're talking about is you're looking for an impartation of the anointing. It's not mine to give. It's the Holy Ghost to give." And I'm like, hey, you know what? I really, I understand that. I understand walking in the natural inspiration. That. So I'm going to walk in natural inspiration. Sometimes people just need, I recognize that a lot of times that people just need to hear the word. They don't need to hear, they don't need to have you come lay hands on them yet. They're not ready. They need to hear the word of God. Huh? And then there's people that are just so stuck in religion. It don't matter what you say. They spin it in the, into the perspective of what they believe. And, and, you know, people think that God's just going to come move on in and just take care of the need. He's going to take care. He's going to respond to the faith. Do you hear me? Yes. But it's all natural. It's inspirational. We don't have to be yoked down and burdened. Oh, no, I can't tell that person about the Lord. I just walked by them. And, oh, I'm just such a wretched, miserable witness. That is nonsense. Get over the thing. I mean, get to a place where it's a wellspring springing, where it's a compassion overwhelming you. Watch what happened. You do that, and you're going to find yourself talking, talking to people about the Lord in places you would have never imagined. I've, I've gone into a place and walked into a, you know, just to go and buy electronics, you know, one of the recent things, going to buy something electrical, and immediately the Lord, inspiration of the Holy Ghost, who are you guys? Well, what do you mean? Well, obviously there's a call of God upon your life, and something's going on. You guys go to church somewhere? Oh, well, we used to. He don't like to go. Well, he's better get ready because he looks like he's about to die any minute. <laughs> no, I've had that come on me. And it's true. I mean, the guy was like, you know, he's, a, he's all just, you know, ancient. And he's holding some kind of bitterness, and he's about to leave this world and go into the next. The Lord will put some strong stuff on the inside of you that will strike the hearts. They won't be able to just, you know, basically just, you know, and just bypass it and, you know, throw it off. Because it's authority 
I want to speak with authority. I want to speak like a scribe and a Pharisee. I want to have a divine inspiration from heaven. I want to have a wellspring springing up in just like the tongues hit you. Same way. Huh? There's, you'll, find, you'll find this if you just do it naturally. If you quit imposing so much stuff on yourself. Huh? And you just say, be God and those that dare and and bond the land. Before long, you'll see, a, you'll get a spit out of the little Montprebea, special tongue. And you know, you're about ready to meet somebody that God's going to use you in. You don't know, you can't predict it, but you just know, you know that tongue. You've been here before. Step out of name. And then you see somebody, it's like a tractor beam, man. Huh? And you've got it. You just go towards them. You've got it. Father, will give it to you. But if you're trying to lead, read your little comments and you know, your little notes, oh, you know, I. <laughs> You know, I'm not very good at this. I'm pretty nervous, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is pretty good. Y'all try him out. There's not really a lot going to happen. But when you step over into that place of being led by the Holy Ghost to address that person, imagine you're walking down the sidewalk. You can't stop. And you've got 30 minute lunch break. You can't stop and talk to everybody. And everybody can't stop and talk to you. You've got 30 minutes to eat. Whatever it is that you're going to eat, if you eat, sometimes the Lord will interrupt you and you don't get another thing to eat, but you got food that, you know, that you'd rather eat, spiritual food. But if you just simply leave it, you just leave it. And you let God the Holy Ghost use you. A whole other dynamic can happen. It won't be long, and all of a sudden, if it's not that day, you'll find Father constantly taking you right to that person instead of your own works and your own pressure and trying to get everybody, and then you miss the one that was ready to receive. God knows the hearts of all men. He knows the one that's ready to receive. He knows the one that's ready to receive the message of salvation. He knows the one that's re ready to receive healing. He knows the one that's ready to receive deliverance. I don't know that one. He knows that one. Hallelujah. Prosadaya. Now, I could shine as a light, you know, I just say, right now, Masa Dea, big Alana, Mona, Monable, Sifred, and I am so to pair it, no matter who they pair me up to play golf with. Okay? And that's a good way to go. People play golf, just go out there as a single because they're going to pair you up with somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And you're just thanking the Lord all the way through the thing and all the way through the prone, just being who you are in God. And they're going to either duck and run and decide that they need to go, got a job that they got to go take care of and they can't play. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You get to just be who you are and just be who you are in God. You'll learn to be to do this and flow in this realm naturally. Then now all of a sudden you begin to lay your hands on someone and pray for someone and you can feel the fire of God and the glory of God come upon you. And it's a done deal. It's a sealed deal. It's not just basically, you know, firing a blank. You're firing a fully loaded, you know, fifty caliber. By nature, it's a relationship. We're being led. We're being guided. We're walking in, living in Him. He's showing us firsthand how to come under the influence of His divine inspirations in this realm of the of the of the language of the Spirit, in this realm of praise and giving of thanks, because we feel the disposition change. We feel the atmosphere change in our life. Hallelujah. Pretty simple. Eh? I pray that from this day forward that you walk out of here tonight recognizing that God called you and chose you and empowered you to follow Jesus and do his works. And it's already yours. And all you got to do is just get happy. Just get thankful. I just had such a hard time being thankful. You're an idiot. And there's no cure for it. Really, honestly, there's no cure for that. You don't know how to be thankful? Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised that you're not basically in a vegetative state, being filled but with, you know, being kept alive through tubes. Of course you know how to be thankful. That's ridiculous. You're just not used to doing this. You're going to quit being lazy. So this is, these, these, these are just excuses that people have, that they're meaningless excuses. They're, the only person that would believe that lie is the person that's saying it. No one else is going to believe it. You just don't understand. I can't smile. Yes, you can. I can. I've had a person try to convince me they can't smile. 
I have birds that try to convince me. They have no more feelings. Their soul has been taken out of their body. I'm going to show you right now you got some feelings. <laughs> but at the time you give them a right hook across the jaw, they're going to have some feelings when they're picking themselves up off the ground. They're ready to, now where the soul just came back. The soul has just arrived. You believe the lie, man. You just got to quit that nonsense. Jesus, all these excuses, all these lies, we're going to have to just pair them out, sort them out. Father has given to us, according to his divine power, everything that we need to live this life. Because he called us to glory. What is that? Walking around, radiating with his life. And the, it's really more than anything else is how do you make, as I said at the very beginning, how do you connect with that which he's doing? Just get happy. Quit being unthankful. Just be happy. Just give thanks unto the Lord. Thank Him for all the good things He's done. That your name's written in the Book of Life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. That you're His favorite child. There was a time in my life where in the realms of my thinking, I was not Father's favorite child because of, of wrong choices that I made. You know what I did? I went around saying I'm father's favorite child. I, I, ch I chose rather to declare God's word than what my thoughts were telling me, than what my history was dictating to me. I'm the apple of his eye. I'm the heir of God and co-inheritor with him. Hallelujah. <sighs> Receive right now in Jesus' name. He's continually strengthening us, <sighs> refreshing us. He's supplying joy. The gifts of the Spirit, they're ours. They're gifts given to us. It's ours. Anytime we need them, whatever we need, whatever situation, it's ours. And now you give yourself to it, it gets stronger and becomes more powerful. You just keep saying, thanking it. I never ask the Lord. I'm never, I don't ask the Lord, oh, God, please give me the word of knowledge. I just, I thank you, Lord, for the word of knowledge. You'll never hear me say, oh, God, please give me. I say, Father, I thank you for the word of knowledge. I thank you for the word. It's supplied. You're not going to say, oh, God, I please. Oh God. I help if I do, just come up and remind me. You're not, I'm not supposed to be doing that. I'm going to thank him for his love. Uh, if I feel like I need a supply of love, I'd say, Father, I thank you for filling me with your love right now, strengthening me with your love. Let your love flow out of me. Hallelujah. I'm going to be continually filled with the Spirit. What does that mean? Does that mean you're going to be rolling on the floor laughing the whole time? No. No. Not necessarily. We need to see your eyes for just a minute. Right? But being filled with the Spirit has multi-dimensions to it. Being filled with the Spirit sometimes for me is my greatest weakness is patience. Patience. Who has time for patience? You didn't get it the first time. So some of the, some of the great moments in my life of being filled with spirit, just being overwhelmed, patience, long-suffering. The willingness to, to wait and to minister and to say it again and to believe for the best one more time, even though all the evidence says it ain't going to happen. Patience, long-suffering, enduring patience. Amen. Amen. Faith never gives up. Did you know that? Did you know that faith never gives up? There is a day where Father closes, draws a line and closes the books. That's the day you depart from this world. But that's not a good give up. That is a day. It's an appointed time. It's an appointed time on that of our lives. We live in an appointed time right now to fully represent Jesus. Father's empowered us to do it. That's his will. All you and I got to do is say, listen, I want to participate with your will, Father. Everything that's keeping me from doing so, I ask you to show me so that no, it doesn't impact me and affect me any longer so that I can go ahead and live naturally by nature. Don't have to have a special disposition, special tone of my voice, my preacher voice. <laughs> Special vocabulary. Nothing, just hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I mean, one of the times I got really shocked. I mean, I honestly, I was just, my hair was on, it was early in the morning, my hair's like, and I don't, you know, I'm a little bit not, 
There's some places I should be a little more self-conscious. Okay? And we have some visitors. And my hair, when I wake up in the morning, I don't think about it. Just like, it's everywhere. You know, because I have to toss her and turn her. And, you know, I walk out. I walked out, you know, just the craziest, like, you know, sleeping outfit kind of thing, you know. And just trying to get to the kitchen to get something to drink. And the power of God hit somebody who was walking by him. I wasn't doing nothing. What was I doing? I was just trying to get some water. <laughs> I just woke up. Because this is just natural. It's just the Lord showing us, this is just who you are. This is on you. And when Father wants to impact people's lives like that, fine. Huh? I have to have some special. <laughs> Concentrating. <laughs> really doesn't take any of our energy at all. It's all divine energy. It's all His. Amen? Amen. So just do it. Just be now empowered to go follow Jesus everywhere you go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The greatest miracles I've seen happen in my life is when I, I was least involved. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for giving us wisdom, <laughs> giving us revelation, giving us insight in these things so that we can find ourselves continually being filled and that we don't, di we don't just relegate it to some specific dimension, but we realize you have all your fullness, every dimension of your life, your goodness, your kindness. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that more people will begin to relate being filled with the Spirit to kindness. What would happen if all of God's people just started being kind and giving themselves to a greater kindness and a greater courtesy, hallelujah, and a greater gentleness with people? Come on. Oh, God, to where that goodness would just be shining forth from a life. Lord, let these things be as much equated with being filled with the Spirit as any other dimension. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, ha. Whew. Anybody have any questions? You want to ask me a question? Because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, that's, I've delivered what the Lord put on my heart to deliver and Anyone want to ask any questions about just walking around naturally, just being who you are in God naturally? Just to help, help, I just want to help you understand that if you fully, if you just give yourself to Jesus, just and, and I don't even want to use the word fully, just give yourself to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm yours. Live through me. Okay, and that's what you do. Fathers, and you give yourself to that. Father is going to perfect the things that concern you, and you're going to find yourself not with your head over in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You're going to find yourself right over here in the disposition of caring for people, loving people, so happy to be alive, so blessed to be in Christ Jesus. All these things are going to be a reality in your life. And then out of that, there's going to be an overflow of signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, nobody has any questions. Question going once. <laughs> going twice, yes. Uh, the other uh, night you asked a question about uh, something that was the answer of it was in the first chapter of Job. What was that? Because I've been reading the first chapter of Job. What was he talking about? Oh, okay. Well, I just simply said, um, did you know that Satan could, could uh, call fire down out of heaven? And then the answer is right there. Right. Yeah, he did. Because fa Father removes the restraints that were on Satan. If Father didn't have restraints on Satan, he would kill everybody that was opposed to his will and destroy them. So Satan said, I can't, you know, he, he doesn't serve you without a cause. You've got to hedge about him. And he's blessed in everything that he's doing. You just let me touch him and he'll curse you to your face. Basically, because that's the inner, that's what Satan believes about everybody. He believes that everybody's evil. Yes. He believes that everybody would choose what he chose, you know, in the right circumstance. So, yeah, he has power to do this kind of things. And I think the bigger point that I like to make is just the, the divine restraint against Satan. That's right. We're kept more than we realize it. We're walking under a glory cloud that we can't even begin to even imagine. It goes far beyond manna fallen from heaven in a fire by night and a cloud by day 
And the more you give things to God and acknowledge Him in it, the stronger that manifest presence is and the more reality strikes your heart. If you live in an imagination and illusion, illusion because of the, of, of the things that you choose to believe and agree with, you'll never see truth. You'll always be foggy. You see, just I don't want anybody to be foggy on these things. That's why it's so important to worship God just on the, on, and give thanks for Him on the very basics of what we have. Just redemption. Names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Being kept by Him. That, that, none, that, that you know, all of our children are, are taken care of. Our household is taken care of. You know. Yeah. You've been what? You've had hardness of heart. You want, will you, will let me tell you what to do. Do you have a Do you have a cassette tape player? Do you have anything to listen to tapes on or CDs on? Okay. Well, what, what you want to do is you want to focus on getting a cassette player or a CD player or something and put the Bible on it and just listen to the Bible. That'll deal with you. That'll soften you up right quickly. Uh huh. Sure. Just listen to the Word of God. The word of God is softening your heart. Word, word, the Word of God will fill you up, fill you up with faith. The Spirit of God will fill you up with faith. I don't believe your heart's hardened. I don't believe your heart is hardened. You just, what you want to do is you want, listen to me, what you honestly, in all due respect, what you want to do is you want to fill your mind and your thoughts with his word instead of all these other things. And of course, saying that to you, it's, it's what we all live by. I just, when I, when I look at people dealing with doubt and unbelief, I know what's going on in their life. They're not being filled with the word. They're not, they're not allowing the word of God to keep and rule their heart and their mind, which is also the peace of God. I let the peace of God rule my heart and my mind. That's what the Lord has empowered us to do. If I've got, if I've got condemnation, guilt, anything of like that going on, well, first of all, it's not going to go on. Because I've already identified that as the enemy of my soul. You identify that as the enemy of your soul. You don't allow it. Peace removes that. And the Word of God is, brings great comfort. The Holy Ghost brings great comfort. The Word of God builds us up in faith and confidence to be able to, to know what Father has for our lives. And Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Everybody just stand with me. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, that I am yours and you're mine. That you live in me and I live in you. And that's just the way it's going to be from here on out. Amen. Find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name.